Well, politics have changed quite a bit since 1986. Back then, we didn't have social media, the internet, or very many third-party candidates. So on the eve of this year's election, we look back at an unusual race. It was all for a lark. It turned into something that more people took seriously than I ever expected when you have actually 9,000 people actually writing your name. It's the story of our own Mark Rose run for governor. A trip the down governor memory lane that moved Mark, Tom victory. Bernard, and Pat Kessler all to song. And it got them to speculate about another radio guy turned candidate. And we want jobs. We want people going back to work. 26 years ago, Rudy Perpich was governor. Cal Ludeman, the Republican challenger. The governor appears supremely confident of victory. And Pat Kessler covered it all. It was about jobs and foreign trade, the economy. We're still talking about the same issues today, but these campaigns were old school. Ludeman even had his own theme song, and Pat remembers it well. Cal Ludeman, so wonderbar, a vote for him will surely get you far. And into that stuffy traditional race jumped a different kind of candidate with a campaign song of his own. Mark Rosen for governor. Yes, Mark Rosen for governor. That's very, you know, oh my God. Tom Bernard and Mark Rosen had only been together for a few months at KQRS, but they were already making waves on morning radio and wanted to do more. I just didn't want to vote for either guy. So I said, well, we just run our own candidate, you know, as a joke. Well, you know, so far the first four games of the World Series every From his kitchen, Mark Rosen delivers two sports casts each morning for KQ. That duty and little Nicky Rosen keep him too busy to do much campaigning. And none of us expected it. We, we thought this thing might fizzle out, you know, in a week or two. We just didn't know. Sifting through his campaign keepsakes more than two decades later, Mark can't believe how it all took off. There were songs written and slogans and... Uh, it turned into uh, an absolute firestorm. Uh, it was amazing. If you want a candidate, who cares about Minnesota? But convincing people that little Marky Rosen is the ticket for Minnesota, well, that's an uphill battle. And I would come in and out of the Capitol back then, and there would be very serious people outside the Capitol with Marky Rosen for governor uh, posters. Little Marky Rosen. Well, I'd be walking down the Nicollet Mall, and I'd see respectable businessmen wearing this button on their lapel. <laughs> and I, they come up to me and shake my hand. They go, no, I'm really voting for you. I went, no, seriously. They had buttons, bumper stickers, newspaper stories. He thought, my God, this is amazing. I promised what was called a CD player in every home. A CD player. They were brand new. And another memorable song. Rosen, Rosen, Rosen. Little Marky Rosen. Little Marky Rosen, sports guy. It was a brilliant PR stunt. But it struck a chord, particularly with kids. Has anyone actually told you that they'll vote for Mark Rosen for governor? Not yet. No matter what happens, we're going to demand a recount. <laughs> it had to be tongue-in-cheek, but I think the appeal was it was refreshing. It was different. As a reporter, we want a good story. And that was a great story. Ready, go! And as the election approached, the sports guy drew a huge crowd outside a sports arena. The big rally we had at Met Center, that was astonishing number one, because we did have 10,000 people out there, and uh, it, was, it was powerful. But when he walked out and saw all of those thousands of people that were there to support him, he teared up a little bit. On election day, Perpich and Ludeman cast their ballots, while Rosen and Bernard wondered, what if? You know, we thought, you know, he had a couple hundred votes. Are people really going to do this? <laughs> I thought, what if I win? What am I going to turn to, to Tom Bernard and go, Oh, what the hell do we do? <laughs> I guess moving to the mansion. <laughs> he wouldn't win, but he would get more than 9,000 write-in votes, more than any of the third-party candidates on the ballot, and setting the stage for a future candidate. And many people say that night, as a matter of fact, because of election night, is the reason Jesse Ventura ended up being governor. As we shot the world! This former wrestler using the Mark Rosen model runs for governor. If I'm responsible for Jesse Ventura being governor, I either apologize or thank you, depending on your viewpoint of the man when he ended up being our governor. But he did learn from this. The Mark Rosen model. <laughs> Who knew? I'm bitter after all these years still. I really, did it win? I, I, we should have been on the ballot. Tom and I and, and Frank were doing this podcast today, and we were thinking, you know, 
what if we'd been on the ballot? You know, it really was a lot of fun and it brought back a lot of memories. And Governor Dayton, if you're watching, I'm coming for you. Oh boy, oh boy, <laughs> with those glasses too. Make sure you bring uh, those. It was the back. 80s. And that jacket. It was the 80s. <laughs> That's good stuff, Chris. <laughs> I'd give anything. For little Marky's denim jacket. That was awesome with the collar up. Good stuff. Uh,